my little head. Um, when preparing it, I looked at the title I sent uh, back in May or somewhere it was when we did the call for papers and I said, you know, you want to talk about Wayland uh, protocols, but as well you want to talk about um, XDP and XDP, so XDG is the protocols, which I will talk about. They're not exactly something about, um, they're not really um, a Wayland standard, right? So I went about, okay, let's send a, <laughs> an email to the organizers and ask them to change the name of my presentation to the program because it's not entirely right. So I went, yeah, it should be something like talking to apps on Wayland, right? Like what we're doing, like uh, David was saying was let's, be talking to the apps. That is much more um, understandable. But then uh, on Wayland, we're not talking about apps, right? Like there's a lot of things that your compositor is going to be talking about. Uh, so it's not really apps we talk about. We talk about clients, right? And then we were <laughs> already on a very weird title that doesn't make any sense to anyone that isn't in my little head, like I said before. And then I said, all right, let's uh, like forget about this thought and just keep with the original title. It's not 100% precise and don't worry. I already introduced myself yesterday. My name is still the same and I am the same person more or less. <laughs> so we can move on from that. Um, like David was saying, we're still transitioning from a slightly similar but not entirely uh, state uh, where we are in X11. Many of you still are on X11 normally. Okay, let's, let's do a, a, the little game that you all love. Raise your hand if you're normally using Wayland nowadays. See? It's probably 50%. So when um, you have this feeling that everybody's still using uh, X11, it's uh, not really the case. I understand that we are these special ones in charge of actually making this well and thing happen, but um, I guess that you catch my drift. Um, one of the important things that we need to understand about uh, what we're doing right now is that we're working from a shared code base. So on X11, we had this humongous code base that is the Xorg, uh, Xorg server or Xorg X server uh, that uh, had or all of the features or was supposed to have all of the features and we had to like implement our software uh, in a subset of those features that uh, were over there. So we're uh, moving from that, from this um, implementation plus the protocols to talk to that implementation into just a set of protocols. So David was talking about, we have all of the applications slash clients uh, talking to the compositor in a specific way and then it's up to the compositor to do the right thing. This is important in many ways. It's important because we get to standardize what we do, but also we get the freedom as a compositor to do the right thing. And by the right thing being whatever Queen slash Plasma developers want to do because we know better. Um, so what does this mean? This means that we're turning what it would have effectively been a merge request kind of, um, of, of, of conversation. I mean, it's still merge request, it's still Git implementation details. But before you were discussing over C code, right? Or how a, a feature is, is talking about the graphic, to the graphics card, it's talking to the different applications, right? You had to also get this implementation right for everyone on, Otherwise, you would have uh, messed up. And, and we've all seen this kind of problems, especially those of us who were trying to make things work a little bit more, uh, well, on the development side, like it's not like everything was um, roses over there. Um, and now, since we're not talking about an implementation itself, but we're talking uh, as compositors, we have uh, this conversation about how our application's talking to the compositor and back. Uh, which is a slightly different uh, conversation, right? Like you have to be thinking in terms of which features you have, which features you mean to be supporting, which features uh, others want to do, right? And uh, like this pitballing of new protocols that you should be having. There's, for example, right now, the one about the virtual desktops, right? Like virtual desktops, one good thing, it's a simple concept, but it's also something that since it's virtual, it can mean anything to anyone, right? So 
if you want to standardize that or this kind of thing, you need to. It's uh, well freeing to everyone, and everybody can do their their own thing, but it's uh, well constraining enough so that it has an actual meaning, right? Because if you do a super generic uh, protocol, then you're actually not uh, well generalizing anything. And I'm not gonna say it's easy. <laughs> In the end, is uh, well. Hackers like us uh, talking to each other, which is, um, well, often not the nicest picture, but it has worked quite all right, and I think that we're doing great. Um, why didn't it change? It changes on my laptop. Whoop, whoop. Well, there you go. So um, what I want to talk to you about today is the, uh, well, the upstream I, I did for two specific protocols uh, or implementations uh, on Wayland, I will base myself on the experience of upstreaming the XDG activation uh, protocol, which uh, David uh, flew by. And then uh, on the XDG desktop portals, uh, I'm gonna focus on the global shortcuts, which was merged only last week, and it's not even entirely deployed just yet, but well, it's there. So I'm gonna take that win and present it at the academy. Um, this is my uh, awkward uh, sketch of how uh, this communication would work, right? Like I was saying before, it's not just Queen with apps. We have um, Queen with the XDG desktop protocols, for example, they can be talking. You can have other demons, for example, running on, on, your, on your system. Queen can be talking to them as well. Effectively, this, this Wayland thing is a socket that you listen, you send messages and receive them from, much like you would do in an HTTP server or something like that, right? And then you have the apps. The apps could be sandboxed, which I try to symbolize with a box, uh, but they don't have to be, and they sometimes are not. And something we actually do leverage in, in Plasma as well is that if you don't sandbox uh, something in a specific way, you can even give some clients uh, specific um, privileges, like uh, you wouldn't let everyone do screencasting of your system, but if, if I really, really know you, then uh, you, you get to have that privilege. This is very, very roughly what the Wayland protocol looks like, and this is what people will be discussing over. Uh, I tried to make something stupid here, but so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. We're, we don't need to understand it. You don't need to feel like you have to understand it. But basically what you would be seeing here is the protocol, which would be a number of uh, objects, uh, an interface, which would be an object, and then there's requests, which is a method, and an event, which is a signal, and they all can have arguments, right? Like this is the big picture. Uh, I, I think that it's maybe understandable enough so that we see what, what we're talking about. Now, when do we want a new protocol? So, uh, the, there is not like a black and white kind of thing. It is a continuum and also we have a number of different IPC systems on, on Linux. We have uh, Dbus, we have uh, well, Wayland, we have uh, X11, XCBs, etc. And we have, well, others, right? Um, we're gonna want a protocol when we want to leverage this uh, connection that we already have between the compositor and the application. I think that this is one of the most important things like the compositor already has a, a connection with a, an application, and if you are talking things that are important in the context of that community, of, of that relationship, it does make sense, right? Like, for example, uh, we can think about if Queen wants to talk to PowerDevil, like the power management system, uh, we could be talking about it uh, through Dbus, which is how we've been doing these kind of things. We could have a, way, a Wayland socket over there. Um, does it make sense uh, for, for us to be implementing it through Wayland maybe now if the Divas uh, position is there? Well, are we, um, do, does it make any sense to, um, to use a one-to-one -one relationship with PowerDevil if any, everybody else is also talking to PowerDevil like we're using, we're using PowerDevil as a service, for those of you you don't know. Uh, so uh, I would say not, right? Um, I think that the best way to see how we're using protocols anyway is to look at the, at the protocols. Uh, so up there you can see the ones that we're keeping for ourselves because we're selfish people. And down there you can see the ones that uh, we're all working on together. 
Um, obviously, and as discussed earlier, uh, the, our own will be always uh, more specific and mm, targeting to a very specific kind of uh, feature. Probably also things that need more uh, like tight handling and making sure that like there's no information getting leaked. Um, whereas the generic ones, they're all more complex, I must say. Like I showed and, and was talking about how simple Wayland protocols are. Uh, some of the standard ones are easily like few thousand of lines of XML code talking about uh, signals back and forth. It can be complex, but you get an idea. Now, instead of talking about how to use a protocol, uh, I can, I'm referring to you to the presentation I did on LAS 2020. But if you didn't watch it and have no intention, the pure version would be there is this tool that you pass the XML code into it and produces um, C++ code that you can call and does uh, the right thing. Um, you need to um, tune it a little bit to make it work with the rest of our things, but it's, it's fairly simple. Um, actually, if, if you look at how we've been doing it in, in KD uh, over the last few years, we've actually gotten quite better in that uh, we used to need a big, big lo lot of um, Sorry about that. Of of code to do um, to do one way and protocol implementation, and now with a few uh, tens of lines, you can you can you can do it. Like I still remember the first times I was talking about this with um, Martin Graslin, and it kind of felt super well hard. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about something uh, very similar because it's still applications. Uh, one thing to have uh, some uh, well, presence in, in the operating system, but it's not such a like, uh, direct uh, conversation between the, uh, the application and the compositor. We have something in the middle which we call the XDG desktop portal service. Um, just to simplify and then so, so you understand how this works, uh, the XDG portal service is a, it, um, it's a, it's a Diva service and nothing more. It's something that you can like call from your command line right now. Uh, you can create, you talk, can talk to a number of interfaces that are available over there. Um, then uh, you can have um, applications talk to the XDG desktop portals and the XDG desktop portals will be talking to the backend in the case of Plasma, which is what we all use. Then it will be to the KD implementation of it, which will be talking about Quinn if we're doing graphical things or I don't know, screencasting or stuff, but it can be talking about other things. You could have a portal about, I don't know, uh, accessing your address book, right? Then it, that wouldn't make any sense to be talking to Quinn. But it's a way for application, especially sandbox applications, to be um, to be accessing uh, information that is uh, not available to them for security reasons, but uh, our implementation can find ways to figure out whether it made sense more often than not by just asking the user if it makes sense to like offer this information and, and move on with it. So uh, how it is implemented both at an application side and a uh, uh, well, portal side, it's just implementing a Diva service. Uh, I guess you've all used it. Who has never used Diva in the room and is a developer? Okay, so we can have a buff, you and you, and you don't live there <laughs> until you know everything that is to know. I'm joking, but we can look into it if you find it interesting. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's fairly simple, right? Um, I, I was saying it's just implementing this um, Divas thing. Uh, if you're implementing a new uh, XDG desktop portal on like the shared thing that we share between us and Gnome and everything, it's, you need some uh, um, glib code that isn't super beautiful, but it's still, uh, well, necessary that uh, communicates, well, the uh, interface that your application will be talking to with the uh, portal that is, um, 
well, specific to your implementation. So this code needs still to be writing, which is basically uh, boilerplate code that um, that you'll find uh, you'll get to copy and paste very effectively. So yes, as you can see, it's it's easy. Is it scary? No. Well, maybe a little bit, but you don't need to be uh, like put off by that. Uh, it's something that it's it's that needs to be doing sometimes and. If we, I think that if we are in the right mindset and if you see that the use case is there, it's something you should be doing. Uh, something that I found uh, very interesting uh, or very useful for, for example, working especially on the XDG um, activation protocol was to just research what people were, ha had been done over there. So what happened over there was that there were, when we were using Wayland back then, we needed this activation protocol, right? Like you sometimes need, uh, your clients to be popping up uh, on the user's attentions. And what, it was something that everybody knew that we had to do. Everybody was kind of frustrated and there had been tons of conversations over the internet about how this should be done, but nobody had sat down and said, okay, let's write the protocol. The protocol right now, it's maybe, I don't know, 50 lines of this uh, XML code that I talked about, right? It's not nothing complex or, or anything like that. So it was mostly a matter of like, seeing what people said. I want this, 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 and this. I'm putting it into an interface and saying, okay, now review this. It was probably my first or second Wayland protocol. I wasn't even that good at it. Not that, not that I am right now. But I think that it was what the community needed to get the conversation started and done and somebody who like pushed through all of these reviews and you should change this letter for, from this to that because some people are more nitpicky than others, and that's it. Uh, talking to people is also important. Uh, it's also something that we don't do enough, and I am talking about, for example, reaching out to the um, different communities, for example, talking to the um, no maintainer. It's, it's something we did, for example, for the activation protocol as well. Uh, we had a meeting with them and said, all right, you want this, we want that, how do we do it? You get to talk about other things. You don't need to have a five-minute uh, um, discussion. You can talk about whatever other problems you might have, and it's always always a good thing. And it's also a good opportunity to um, to get other problems addressed, right? Um, yeah, I see. We had once, and yeah, talk to your your people. Like it's it's something that can easily happen to us that. Um, we're very focused on the problems that we have in ourselves and we really want to, to fix these. But having the conversation with others and for example, using Academy to see, uh, I need this protocol, I need this, this, this way of doing this thing because it's important for my use cases, for whatever. I think that it's uh, what is gonna make the, well, the standards the better and the, easy to, the easier to be adopted. Uh, and, and since, it, and since it's mostly about uh, talking, then just remember to be nice, to ask, to try to empathize with the others before trying to uh, do your thing. If you want to do your thing anyway, you can create just a plasma protocol, right? Uh, when we're standardizing, it's to make something for, for everyone, and, and to do it, we need to be like good human beings. Not that we are not, or that I have seen anything that was terrible, right? But I think that it's always a good reminder. Now, if you have any question for me and for David, it's probably a good moment to do that. <laughs> Come up, David. One thing, one thing I realized is that um, many times the protocols, before they are standardized, they are... It's, it's a bit echoey, oh. and I don't really understand. So, yeah, no, yeah. Try again. Yeah, let's try. So, before a protocol is made standard, usually there's a an implementation that only Queen supports, um, and many times there are two competing implementations, or even three. For example. Yakwake cannot position itself on the top of the screen on Genome, but Wake can 
But Wake won't work on Plasma, and Jack Wake can. So there are two protocols, the two different protocols for doing that. Yeah, no, no, there's, there's even more. Actually, why we're um, standardizing la layer shell is because you, we want to be able to do this kind of thing, right? Like, yeah. So you, ne you need to have some time to get there. But it's also a good thing, right? Like, if we got one implementation super quickly because it's super important to have Yakway work on Gnome, then we might get it wrong and for no reason. So I think it's a good thing, actually. Well, uh, I'm worried that it will fragment the desktop, like... I mean, it certainly has fragmented the community of sliding from the top terminals, but <laughs> if it's for the best of the community, I think that we can do it. Anything that takes, takes screenshots, like many, many things broke. Well, I mean, it's a good thing, like screenshots. Do you really want every application to be taking screenshots of your application? That's what we're running again uh, away from. We don't want every application to be spying on what our users are doing. So like it's very on purpose that we don't have these features. Now, if you call that broken, it's maybe because you want uh, like more maybe liberal operating system that like lets you do all kinds of shit. Um, we're working on this direction and m all of the things can be done, right? Is it fragmentation or is it us doing things properly for the first time on Linux? But it's not more secure because there's protocols to do it anyway. Well, no, 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 no. Try it. The, the, the reason, it's not something you can do. I cannot, uh, you cannot create an application, uh, a third party application for Plasma today and take a screenshot without either having to like come from the distro or having to be popped up and say, do you really want this application to be uh, taking pictures of your stuff? And this is what we've been working for. A question from the online audience. Are there any legacy Wayland decisions that were taken in the early days, which were later determined to be mistakes we were living with now? I, I don't think mistakes, but but things that some you would do different now because it makes some stuff harder. Like the big point is, is fractional scaling and how it currently works is that you tell a app render at two times scale and then your compositor will scale it down and it's, people sometimes claim it's bad or wrong but it, it, it isn't, it's like how, how macOS works. They do it the same but now we are, we are wanting to do proper fractional scaling like, like rendering at 1.5 scale and that's a bit complicated because everything before is always in, in integers and it it's makes it complicated. Maybe a way of looking at this uh, in a bigger hindsight is the uh, existential protocol. I yeah. think that it's at the seventh version. If it's at the seventh yeah, yeah. version, it's the because... The seventh version became the stable one. Yeah, but like there were <laughs> six before that somebody probably fucked up or for, uh, forgot about something. And that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, we're all alive. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, thank you very much, Alex and David.